this is my first YouTube video on this channel. And while I kind of want to introduce myself, I also don't want to turn away people with an overly long intro. So hi, I'm Sugar. I live life like it's still 2005, even though I'm an adult now and it's 2021. I love things that are cute, soft, and I own a little online accessory shop. Hello! So the year is 2000. Having a computer in your home with access to the internet is becoming a normal thing. Whether you have dial-up internet or something much more efficient, you're excited about your journey onto the World Wide Web. You're a kid, either girly by nature or conditioned to be so, so of course, one of the first places you're encouraged to check out is Barbie.com. Hey, check out my son! Fashion, fun, and games, all at Barbie.com. After a few months of wearing out babysitting baby Chrissy, shoe hunt, and car fun, your attention is drawn to the little pink banner at the top of the screen, advertising Barbie's sister sites and doll line. My scene, what's her face, Polly Pocket, Kelly Club, and of course, the Diva Star! The Diva Stars was a doll line created by Mattel in the fall of the year 2000. They were cute with exaggerated proportions like large heads, eyes, and feet. They were advertised as innovative due to their electronic components that allowed the divas to speak to their owners using metal contacts in their clothing and pre-recorded voice lines. For example, the owner would have a top for the doll, and as you snapped it onto her, she would respond saying, This blue dress is very stylish! She knows! They could also talk to other Diva Stars dolls if you had more than one, with the metal contacts detecting each other. We know each other! Nikki? Their fashions were super cute in early 2000s with crimped hair, tube tops, cargo pants, and a plethora of hair clips. They also would later expand to have pets, scooters, and even a glow-in-the-dark line. All in all, super cute. In the beginning, there were four dolls with four distinct styles. Alexa, the girliest and most fashion-inclined. Nikki, the athletic skater girl. Summer, the nature fanatic and activist and Tia, the tech whiz and musician. Later they would go on to rebrand with taller and slightly more realistic proportions. This rebrand would sadly see the end of releasing Summer Dolls due to her lack of popularity and would replace her with a new doll named Miranda, a girl who was just described to be wealthy and love her new friends. The Diva Stars website was an interesting and again, at the time, super innovative site, being made entirely out of Flash. Once you entered the website, you were greeted with an introduction from all four girls. What's up? I'm Nikki, sports fan to the max. Hey girl, I'm Tia, hip cool chick and a techno whiz. I'm Summer, I'm like totally into nature. <laughs> I'm Alexa, your personal expert on style. of the girls' rooms were clickable, and through them, you could learn more about the diva stories and personalities from webisodes and minigames. The webisodes were flash animated shorts with simple games included, where players could assist the divas with whatever task at hand and complete their stories, like redecorating an apartment, styling the girls' clothes, and matching items to each character. The Diva Stars was initially a hit, but of course the doll market is an incredibly competitive place. If you hadn't already realized, the Divas were incredibly similar in appearance and proportion to the Bratz. Created by MGA Entertainment in 2001, MGA was, and still is, a direct competitor to Mattel, especially considering one of the creators of Bratz previously worked with Mattel. This created an infamous legal battle between the two. To compete, Mattel began to put a lot of focus into their new Mycene dolls that had a similar aesthetic to the Bratz. Perhaps because of the growing success of the Bratz, which at one point seemed to be on its way to overthrow Barbie, the Diva Stars saw it fitting to attempt the earlier mentioned rebrand, with a higher focus on fashion instead of electronic components. I'm guessing because fashion seemed to be leaning in a more urban direction in the early to mid 2000s, versus the futuristic, sleek, and for lack of better words, white aesthetics it entered the decade with, Mattel decided to remove Summer 
for the edgier, perhaps more fashion forward at the time, Miranda. MGA, being less scared of controversy, definitely had the market with this one, however, because the Diva Stars were still a majority Caucasian brand versus the Bratz and later Mycene, who would fully embrace diversity. I guess this rebrand seemed to signify the lack of footing Mattel was feeling at the time, as it was clear their major efforts were going to Mycene. The Diva Stars began to fall to the back burner and would be discontinued by 2004. However, this rebrand was my favorite look of the Divas, and I'm actually so sad we didn't get more dolls, more diversity, and flash animation in the rebranded style. I think in terms of appearance, the Diva Stars may have been too easily mixed up with the Bratz dolls, likely due to the Divas' lack of super trendy urban clothing and over-the-top makeup, which children tend to be attracted to, the Bratz and similar competitors would continuously get picked up during shopping trips. The one thing the Diva Stars and Mattel as a brand had over Bratz was the concept of webisodes and flash content. While Bratz did have their fair share of flash games, they definitely paled in comparison to what Mattel was churning out at the time. They also hadn't really tackled a webisode at all, which if it hadn't become such a staple to Mattel by that point, who would begin producing them for my scene as well, I'm sure MJ would have done so for the Bratz. But of course, the Bratz got their own TV show later on anyway. The Diva Stars webisodes animations began with the initial, shorter, less proportionate image of the dolls. These webisodes are still cute and did get better over time, but this design simply doesn't look quite as great to me as the rebrand. With a trip to the Diva Stars fan site by Lizzie, you can see these webisodes as well as the initial bedroom design of the flash site. This original concept was created by Joe Burial and DeChester Studios, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering their names. A lot of Burial and DeChester Studios content can still be found online. Flash is unfortunately dead now in 2010, and along with it, so much of internet history and I'm literally so upset, can we sign a petition or something to bring Flash back? So in order to play the games, you need an SWF player or Shockwave file player, and perhaps some other downloads as well. But because of the Diva Stars fan site, we can still see the number of webisodes, old lost episode descriptions, and even some screen captures. Some of the webisodes are even available here on YouTube in full detail. Once we reach into the rebrand, which would only see three webisodes, Popstar Dreams, Fashion Funland, and Fashion Emergency, only one webisode is available, Fashion Emergency. This absolutely broke my heart when I first discovered the fan site because I was so excited to play them as I remembered adoring and finding hilarious the Fashion Funland webisode. My sister and I had so many laughs playing the Diva Stars, and while I did love some of the missing earlier webisodes too, I absolutely adored the rebrand, as I've said at least three times now. So I had to do some more digging. We could credit the great art, fluidity, and more stylized approach of the rebranded Flash games to the fabulous software engineer Nilo Tipler. I found Tipler's name while searching through Lizzie's fan site, as well as the portfolio on the Wayback Machine. Mind you, this was in 2020, so we still had access to Flash sites on the Wayback Machine. I searched up his name on Google and was immediately met with two Twitter accounts, one inactive and the other still active, but mainly posting cute dog photos. I was a bit saddened thinking this may not be him, but thankfully the bio gave me hope stating things like Flash, Software Engineer, HTML5, etc. I quickly wrote out this message on July 18th. Hi Nilo, sorry to take up any of your time if you ever see this, but I'm a longtime fan of your work with the Diva Stars back from when I was a little kid. I know people have probably reached out to you a lot, but I was wondering if you by any chance still had access to some of your work you did for Diva Stars such as the Fashion Funland Webisode 13 and Popstar Dreams Webisode 12. There is a whole website dedicated to Diva Stars and us fans from years ago who still love your work. They have reached out to Mattel with no avail. I was hoping maybe you know about a way we could get access to it or if you even had some of them on file. And I proceeded to not get a response for three months. It turned out that Nilo had initially believed my message to be spam was then surprised upon opening it to see it was a fan of his older work. He then let me know he still had all of his early files on his computer and would send them over to me soon. On the 3rd of January 2021, I received a zip file in my Twitter DMs, including the Diva Stars bedroom, the loading screen minigames, the two missing webisodes, 
Mission Emergency, and other Flash games Neela had worked on alongside Mattel, and these are their contents. Pimping make you pretty. Turn it up! Samantha, everyone's ready. You're on in five minutes. No worries. I've got an idea. You, come with me. Who? Us? Are we in trouble? What do we do? I need one more, and you, follow me. I can't believe we're backstage. This is so cool. No doubt. I hope no one steals our seat. What's this all about, anyway? It's about my backup dancers. Whoa! G'day, I'm Samantha, and I need your help. I think I'm gonna faint. I saw you out there dancing, and you're all pretty good. Will you fill in for my stranded backup dancers? Sure! Why don't you get dressed, and I'll show you my moves. Time for your press conference. Later. 
first to fly. Wow, that was amazing. I felt like a sweet, delicious star. Me too. I'm Miranda, by the way. Hi, Hi Miranda. Miranda. You guys want to go out for a bite? I'm starving. Me too. Yeah. Who knew being a pop star could make you so hungry? <laughs> <laughs>
If your aesthetic totally fits in with the nostalgic, soft, girly, 90s and 2000s style, I would be so totally grateful if you check out my shop at cupofdreamtea.com and my socials. All links are in the description. Thank you. See you soon.